Good afternoon everyone, my name is Lewis, welcome back to the channel. I hope I find you all safe and in good health. Today I'm going to be talking about some of the albums I've been listening to recently. I'm going to speak about each album in turn and why I would recommend them. So first out of the gate is a 1979 R&B album. It's a self-titled album. Uh, by an artist by the name of Brenda Russell. So I have really good memories of this particular album. Um, it's classic two-step R&B. Um, as is often the case um, with this era of R&B album, um, this one wasn't given the attention perhaps that it should have been. Now there are four tracks of note on this particular album, two of which were released as singles in the US charts and got in the top 40. But the two that I'm going to mention were not released as singles. Um, this is a mellow and jubilant album and her singing performance on the tracks that I'm going to mention are very good. Um, I would say if you like somebody like Elkie Brooks, there's every chance that you're going to like this particular album. So the two tracks that I would recommend are firstly In The Thick Of It and secondly with the help of the Double Rock Baptist Junior Choir, the track A Little Bit Of Love. It's an iconic track. Um, I really love that track. I kind of, my teenage years was kind of like fueled by that particular track. Um, yeah, the people, I'm just thinking, those people who were part of that particular tune must be in their mid to late 50s by now. So something to think about in any case. Um, a good album um, in parts. Um, I bought it specifically for two tracks. You might find other tracks that you enjoy on this particular album. Um, it's not the easiest of albums now to find, but if you do find it, it's going to be on the more affordable side of things. Um, CDs should be quite easy, I would have thought. But yeah, check out those two tracks that I've mentioned. Hopefully you'll enjoy them as much as I have over the years. And um, yeah, um, it's one which would always have permanent residence in my particular collection. So, yeah, have a listen. The second album today, I've got really good relationship with. Um, I really do enjoy it. It's a 1971 prog rock album, and it's by an, an artist by the name of Serge Gainsbourg. And the album is called History of... Melody Nelson. That's a lovely cover. Yeah, I really do like that. So let's address the elephant in the room straight away. And that is um, these, the overall theme to this album or its inspiration was basically uh, Nabokov's uh, Lolita. So make of make what you will of that particular information but that's the the whole fundamental reason behind this album um, it's just a French version of it of that particular tale um, this is a sexy sassy mischievous frivolous and sophisticated album all at the same time um, what I really do appreciate about this album it's one man's vision um, it's not done by committee. This has got Gainsbourg's um, fingerprints all over it. And I appreciate that. Now, you may have heard of him. Um, and I won't be surprised. And that's because of his infamous track. Uh, it's called Je T'aime. Now, for him, it's probably that track is a double-edged sword. In, and what I mean by that is um, it doesn't really represent how good a composer and performer he actually is his, his actual imagination but that particular track took off 
and it probably allowed him or gave him the opportunity to buy many Rolls Royces and many mansions right across the world. So I'm sure for him it was a double-edged sword, but it certainly doesn't represent what he's capable of that particular track. Um, this is a coherent, perfectly realized album with snarling bass, snapping percussion and frenetic strings. It's an absolute joy, this particular album. The three tracks that I would recommend from this album would be Cargo Suite, Melody, and Le Hotel Particulier. Wow, I managed to give it a kind of French twang there, which is really unusual for me. Um, notable performers on this particular album are Brian Otgers on bass, uh, Dougie Wright on drums and Vic Flick on lead guitar. Um, I'd never heard of those particular gentlemen before, but um, I'm reasonably confident that if there were other musicians present instead of the three I've mentioned, this album wouldn't sound as good as it does. So I congratulate you gentlemen. Um, you've added to a fantastic body of work so well done to you um, on vinyl um, it's still available as a reprint um, can be on the more expensive side of things but I think it's entirely worth it on CD yeah you shouldn't have any problems at all but um, I would say if you've never heard this you're in for a treat a musical treat um, yeah, I find just an outstanding body of work. Um, and I've, I've got quite a few other Gainsbourg material in my collection, so I'm not surprised at what he's capable of. But this is a really good example of it. So um, sit yourself down, glass of wine, have a listen. Yeah, this is really good. Oh, CD, yeah, as I said, CD would be fine, but yeah, I prefer it on vinyl. As you can see the third album today is from my Latin jazz section of my collection and it is a 1977 release and it's by an artist by the name of Bobby Pornetto and the album is called commit to memory there you go that's two lovely covers in a row yeah it's purely by accident but sometimes that's the way it goes um this is a lovely new new yorican album and when i say new yorican that's basically an an amalgamation of new york and puerto rico so that's hence they just squash the names together new yorican um Although this album is a bit choppy, it's not fully consistent. Um, where it is good, when it is good, it's on an epic scale. Um, it has flair, um, intensity, and energy. Um, high production values, and I would say, um, Ponetto, um, it's quite obvious that. He takes all of these musical influences and moulds them to, together um, in a seamless style. And I really do appreciate that. So this is one of those albums that I had seen in rec numerous record shops. Always flipped past it. Um, but once I heard it, I got slightly addicted to it. I kept playing it and rightfully so because when it's good, it's very, very good. The tracks that I would highlight from this album would be Spanish Maiden, El Catalan, and Little Rico. Really good tracks, those. Um, the notable musicians on this particular album are Frank Malabi on Conga, and Fred Munar on Timbales and Bata Drum. Really good well, contribution from those two gentlemen. Just really, what was a lively album? They've just given it a, just a, 
sprinkling more sophistication with their input and yeah it makes for a really good listen so again have a listen on one of the stream insights to the tracks that i've highlighted see what you think but i i have the impression that you're well i hope that you're going to enjoy it because i certainly do and like i said i'm slightly addicted to this particular album so yeah give it a go see what you think um the fourth album today and wow it's like three really good album covers in a row um it's jazz fusion album from 1971 by a gentleman called freddie hubbard and this is an album called first light and as you can see it has the cti stamp on the front now if you don't know and you haven't seen earlier episodes um what i would strongly suggest is when you see cti on a an, on an album that pretty much means that there's at least one phenomenal track on it but usually it means that the whole thing's pretty good and this one doesn't point, disappoint um now freddie hubbard is considered one of the greatest trumpeters of all time now consensus would say um he's behind uh, miles davis and dizzy gillespie in the pantheon of trumpet players but i i've got to be honest um in terms of what i listen to and what i find enjoyment in when i've listened to the material of all three artists freddie hubbard for me seems to resonate more with me than the other two now i'm not willing to die on a hill for that particular um, opinion in terms of who's the best um, but I would just say from a personal standpoint Hubbard does it for me more than the other two so take that or leave it um, this is a beautiful album um, a masterpiece of textured sound sweet tight grooves uh, and ethereal and adventurous string arrangements now I'll come to explain that in a moment why I said what I said um, the tracks that I would highlight from this particular album are First Light Uncle Albert slash Admiral Halsey that's all one track and Lonely Town now as you can see on the cover there's quite a few names below Freddie Hubbard and Basically, what that's telling you is is that this is a super group. Every musician there is a person of note. Um, Hubert Laws on flute, Erto on percussion, George Benson on guitar, Ron Carter on bass, and Jack D. Jeanette on drums. Wow, what an assembly of musicians. To have them all in one place, that's saying something. That tells you the strength of Hubbard's talent and the mutual respect each musician musician has for one another. That's quite hard to do. Now you, you do find albums with equally talented musicians on it, but sometimes those albums don't work for whatever reason. This one does. And yet not no, that's just too easy. It sure does work in this particular context. Um and if that wasn't enough, um, this album was recorded by Rudy Van Gelder. Um, and again, if you've never heard that name before, he appears on quite a few Blue Note albums. And um, again, it's when his name is associated with something, it the actual uh, finished product sounds amazing. Now, he doesn't disappoint again in this particular example. This is a phenomenally rich sound in body of work. So, but yeah, like I said, CTI, Rudy Van Gelder. Yeah, it's like that all makes sense now. But if that wasn't enough, you've got Don Sebeski, who's doing the strings arrangement on this particular album. So you've got a superpower group. You have, you know, at 
that particular time probably the most talented recording engineer to actually do the recording of the album and you have one of the best arrangers in the business in um, Sebesky wow this, that's why it's so good this particular album I put in the category of no brainer if you see it get it um, of course have a listen to it beforehand but if you don't and you do happen to see it um, or either on vinyl or CD just get it you're in for an absolute treat um, this is jazz fusion at its best so I don't say that lightly so yeah just get it yeah you'd be doing yourself a favor so yeah uh the last album for today is a slight departure it's uh a 1978 release and it's avant-garde jazz don't be frightened by that um and it's by a gentleman called herman sonny blout otherwise known as sun ra and the album is called Languidity. Now, uh, Sun Ra is a pioneer of what was to become Afrofuturism. And that was basically um, a fusion of ancient Egyptian mythology and science fiction. Now, he's got quite a body of work. But what you will find, um, the central theme, which includes this particular album is that it's infused with groundbreaking and unconventional melodies and harmonies he's really big advocator of that type of sound um, Sun, Sun Ra along with his orchestra not orchestra orchestra um, are characterized usually by their unpredictable improvisations um, this is a interesting and rewarding listening experience and um, again I'm, I'm slightly jealous if you've never heard this before that you're gonna have the opportunity to hear it because it, it's it's something to really think about once you're actually listening to it or you have listened to it and it's like hmm that was a new experience not sure if I enjoyed that or not let me listen to it again by the third occasion you're gonna go wow this is something else um, the tracks that I would recommend from this particular album will be Languidity uh, there are other worlds and that's how I feel three really good tracks yeah really good tracks I would say as a side issue, um, if you want to kind of get a better handle on what Sun Ra is all about, um, on YouTube there is his 1974 cult film called Space is the Place. And how I would describe that is um, a, a black exploitation slash low budget version of David Bowie's The Man Who Fell to Earth so yeah if you're familiar with that film then you're gonna have a kind of idea of what Sun Ra's film is all about and it was very enjoyable I, I really did like it and hopefully you'll get to see it yourselves and if you want to share your thoughts about the movie please do it in the comments section I'd like to hear your opinion but yeah I'm, I'm glad that that exists and it certainly did help me understand who and what Sun Ra and his orchestra are all about and it, yeah it really gave me a good appreciation of what they were doing and I think they were pretty successful in it it's something different so yeah good luck to you on listening to that um, on vinyl uh, still can find this relatively easy CD I think that's a bit harder um, but yeah on vinyl it's reasonably priced if you can find it yeah it's not going to be extravagant for it but yeah there's a lot of material by Sun Ra so check it out yeah it's it's something different it's it's not mainstream jazz so that's what makes it slightly interesting to me well not more than slightly interesting that's what makes it interesting to me so and that was the last album for today um, 
I'd like to thank you for spending some time with me. I certainly did enjoy it. Um, if you like the content, uh, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share. I really would appreciate that. And I just would say in this time of crisis, please be safe, um, stay healthy, look after one another. And hopefully I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.